psychology and psychiatry the disciplines what we call today as mental health are relatively new in the world of modern sciences only a century back these branches started in europe and then spread all over the world but for asian countries especially the indian peninsula the branches of psychology psychiatry mental health were integrally woven with culture with spirituality and with the traditional wisdom many of the religions that rooted in this soil the vedanta philosophy the buddhist thought the jainism even the sikh religion all religions talked about self development self enlightenment and integrated the principles of what we call self development and self acceptance in their own philosophical teachings and learnings as far as mental disorders were concerned there were traditional healers and the society was also much more tolerant it gave a certain place of dignity to people who had physical disabilities mental disabilities and even chronic mental illnesses there was a widespread acceptance in this soil the modern psychiatry or mental health came to this country along with the british rulers they brought the model of modern medicine and this model essentially was a biomedical model the physical part of it was very easily accepted because it had a power of quick symptom alleviation but the treatments on the treatments on mental disorders were also in their infancy there in the western world as well so the model that was brought in this country was that of mental asylums segregating people with mental illnesses in hospitals that were akin to jails this model of segregation had no other substitute so the culture and the society in this country had to accept it because it had no other better alternative but till the time it was unavoidable taking treatment of modern psychiatry was not considered a very favorable thing so psychiatry psychology and mental health faced two problems one was acceptance of the medical fraternity body and bodily medicine was given its due respect but not mind because that dichotomy was inherent in the system itself and the society did not favor did not accept this particular model of treating mentally ill people and therefore in this country of 131 crores population even today how many trained psychiatrists that we have just over 7000 and how many psychologists we have some more thousands but that's it the problem with this particular model of segregating mentally ill individuals was that it alienated the society and secondly the whole outlook was very restricted the concept of mental health was equated to treatment and that to symptomatic treatment of mental disorders today when we think about mental health in the 21st century perspective we say that mental health has three layers the first layer of course is that of disorders but the treatment needs to extend itself out of symptomatic relief to partnership with that person suffering from mental illness participation of his entire family in the process because we in our country have family support which is a resource which is lying there in abundance and needs to be utilized for the benefit of that person and for the family 
and therefore participation of this family structure, the social structure in total rehabilitation of that person becomes very important. Similarly, the support groups, people with mentally, people with mental illness coming together, their families expressing together and working in solidarity becomes a very important aspect of treatment of disorders where everybody participates. The second segment that is of distress today in the consumeristic society, individual aspirations are flying and people are thinking more and more in a self-centered narcissistic way, falling prey to a lot of short-term pleasures and the gap between aspiration and performance, between performance and the prevailing situation gives rise to a lot of distress and distress is a crucible for disorders. Unfortunately, most of our clinical psychiatrists are trained to treat disorders, but treating distress requires a different type of approach, a more psychological, psychosocial approach. Sadly, a lot of our colleagues are lacking in this. This is where, in fact, the distress management, that is where we need to focus because distress is prevalent in all age groups. And then comes development. At every age, every stage, people require two types of inputs. One, how to make their coping effective. And secondly, how to gel productivity with happiness. And if the education of development, the psychological development, is given properly, then of course the distress will be low. And if distress is low, the disorders will remain under considerable limits. So, the holistic approach of looking towards mental health covers disorders, distress and development. Now, as it is apparent that this whole gamut of mental health, therefore, is not limited to only mental health professionals. And the challenge therefore is that unless we all come together, we will not be able to destigmatize mental health. So let's come to this important point as to what is stigma. Stigma is essentially a rigid negative belief that is held steadfastly irrespective of a lot of data that is there against it. And even if it is very self-defeating and counterproductive in its nature. And stigmas generally are a problem with any society in terms of social advancement. It's an obstacle for any kind of open viewpoint of looking at a particular concept. In terms of mental health, the stigma operates at two levels. One is stark and the other is subtle. Stark one means that, oh, all psychiatric illnesses are lunacy, these are mad people and the doctors of uh, these mad people only give sleeping medicines. That's a kind of a stark stigma. It is based on ignorance, but even if I have access to knowledge, I don't use it. That's when it is called stigma. And you have a very subtle stigma. The subtle stigma means that I am in charge of my mind. And if there is a problem that I have in my mind, I will solve it. And if I require help, that means that I am weak and my mind is weak. So labeling yourself as a weak minded person, whenever you are facing distress is also a subtle type of stigma. So the rigid negative belief is to be replaced by a flexible, healthy, positive belief. That's destigmatization. So what does it mean? It means that we need to tell the society, the people, the families that your mind and your body are integral parts of your existence. And as your bodies can face problems, so can mind. 
and there are ways to deal with it scientific ways to deal with it also if you work on your thinking emotions and behavior in many many scientific validated ways you can be a better human being you can really link others interest with self interest that is the stigmatization but it's a process it's such a long process that it has no end <laughs> because beliefs don't change easily you require a collective effort although the mental health professionals have to take a lead in these efforts it's important that the community is linked with it is related to it at our experimental laboratory called institute for psychological health for last three decades all of us have been functioning to find out can we destigmatize mental health and we found out of our own experiences that it's not only the psychologist and psychiatrist and counselors but members of the society if they are linked to your cause then a lot of initiatives can be taken because unless you are a team you can't make a social impact so for making a social impact team effort is very important and secondly you need to have an umbrella of services so and in our center or in our uh, experiment we decided to give services to almost all strata of people or age groups of people and we started reaching out to society with a lot of developmental initiatives projects that ran for years together and of course distress alleviating activities including continuous training and development programs for all strata of the society so we tried to cover the disorder distress and development segment through all these activities and we found that unless you are consistent unless you are very creative and unless you go on and on and on despite the response and the resistance you can't really change the belief but once you can then things start changing society first looks at you with some kind of indifference then curiosity and then starts aligning itself with your cause today many times we see people coming to our place our institute with a variety of needs and those needs mind you are not only the troubling symptoms of mental disorders today an executive an entrepreneur comes to us a student comes to us for future guidance a artist comes to us for development of his talents an athlete comes because he wants to improve on uh, his merits so when all these people start coming to you when you have not only addicts people suffering from schizophrenia bipolar disorder but parents teachers entrepreneurs everybody coming to a place the place becomes a common normal place it doesn't remain a place where mad people come for treatment and that my friends is de stigmatization and what we have learned on our way throughout our work some important messages first that one has to go out of the clinical paradigm it's not only writing prescriptions it's not only taking a 45 minute session with your client but it's walking that extra mile with the community and when you go out of that clinical paradigm then you really start aligning yourself with the social cultural and emotional realities of the community that you are working with sometimes you will see a need in the community quite ahead of your times and therefore there will be initiatives which won't give you response this has happened with us time and again but we have learned our lesson and we have persisted consistently and creatively and it's the umbrella that works if you want to make a social impact you need to have a umbrella of services given by a comprehensive team of committed individuals and then only we can add to the emotional immunity of our society 
the concept of emotional immunity has now become more important in the post corona world <laughs> because corona has taught us so many lessons and it has taught us that having a sound mind is as important perhaps more important in addition to having a sound body in these times one important theme related to mental health is going to be resilience we'll have to be a resilient world culture and for that we will require a scientifically validated mental health paradigm unless we have that then there would be people and agencies that would spread pseudo scientific pseudo philosophical pseudo religious paradigms and vulnerable society can fall prey to it so it's very important that mental health doesn't remain a concern related to only a group of professionals but becomes a kind of a universal goal for everybody sociologists warn that for any culture the post pandemic times are very crucial on one side people would become more sensitive about hygiene and health but on the other side because of the economic setbacks the social disintegration people will face a lot of challenges and therefore there are going to be these two key words rioting and resilience the social rioting behavior starts in a distressed mind and it's the rational mind that gives rise to resilience therefore mental health today has come to the center stage of our society and culture if we want to have a more resilient world then there is no substitute to rationality aldous huxley talked about the brave new world we need to work on making a empathic rational new world if we do that then that would be the greatest 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 learning that this species would have learned out of these difficult times thank you